this video, I show you how to use a second light in your home studio to separate your subject from the background. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. Hello, I'm Gavin Howie, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. In this video, I'm back inside of my studio as we continue our mini-series on working in a small home studio environment. Now, in the first part, we looked at a few ideas that you can do just using one single flash to light your portraits. That's great, but they, you kind of reach a point where one flash just isn't quite enough. You need, well, a second light. Now your second flash doesn't have to be exactly the same as your first one. In fact, this is my Streaklight 180. So this is the, the smaller, lighter, lower powered and a little bit cheaper version of the Streaklight 360 that I've got hidden away inside of this softbox. However you set your lights up, adding a second light can really lift your photography and give you loads of creative options. And in this video, we're gonna look at adding a second light as a hair light, a separation light, an accent light, call it what you like, a light just to separate our subject from the background. Speaking of which, we could probably do with the subject really. So let's clear this out and set up the shoot. I'm joined in the studio by Freya. Give him a little wave, Freya. She's going to be the model for today and the idea is really simple. We're going to get her to blow some bubbles, we're going to do a profile picture, it's going to look fantastic. But before we get to the bubbles, which can be a little bit messy, we're going to set the lights. Now to begin with, we'll just use one light, we'll just use this one here, the, the other light is switched off and I'll show you the problem with just one light. Okay Freya, can I get you to turn and face the, the softbox, lovely, and we'll just take a shot here, here we go. So with just one light, we get very nice exposure on her face, but by the time we get to the back of her head, it really disappears into the dark shadows of the background. So to get the hair to separate from the background, we need to add in a separation light, a second light. So this is our second light here, and uh, we'll just turn it on, of course, and then we'll pop it a little bit higher, so it comes down from above and lights the top of her hair and her shoulders. Now we can't just put that in place, we need to know how bright to set it. So let's take some meter readings with the flash meter. So we'll meter off the front here, which is giving me F8 as a meter reading on the front. But I also need to know how much light is falling on Freya's hair. So let's take a, a meter reading for that light as well. And that's telling me F4. So the hair light is two stops less bright than the front light. Now that might be right, that might be wrong. Let's take a test picture and have a little look and see how that goes. Okay, so here we go. And as you can see, there's a little bit of light on her hair and her shoulders. It just separates her from the background a little bit, but we can easily increase the power of that hair light by, well, using the remote here, adding an extra stop. So this will be one stop less light than the key light. And we can increase it again, so we can even up the key light and the hair light. And we can even overexpose the hair compared to the background light. So we can increase the amount of light, change the look and feel of the, the hair light, the accent light, simply by increasing its power compared to the key light. What's correct is entirely up to you, and it'll vary from person to person and hair color to hair color. So I think we want it a little bit less Let's go for about a stop less light on the, the hair compared to the face. Now you'll notice that the background in this shot is black, and that is because the, the softbox is pointing towards the camera and away from the background. However, it wouldn't be a problem if I just move the key light so it also hits a little bit of the background as well, and that will put a little bit of detail in the background. Okay, let's take the shot. And there you go, we now have a very small amount of detail in the background. And I think that's the look I'm going for. So there we go, that's the light set. Now all we need are some bubbles, and let's get blowing. Are you ready? Okay.
Okay, well that was really great fun to do. Freya did fantastically well blowing bubbles. It's harder than it looks, honestly, it really is, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Okay, so let's get our favorite picture into Photoshop and we'll do a bit of editing and we're gonna do that right now. Don't forget to check out Adorama's latest contest and your chance to win amazing prizes. Well, it was very, very brief, but did you see me holding this thing here? This is a bubble machine and there was bubbles streaming out the front. So what we found as the shoot progressed was, although Freya was very good at blowing bubbles, I wasn't so good at capturing them. It was just trying to get a long stream of bubbles in a fraction of a second actually is quite challenging to do. So we're gonna take the, the picture of Freya and the pictures of the bubble machine and bring the two together. And using Photoshop, it's really simple to do. Let's have a look. So this is the picture we want to add the bubbles into, and the reason I want to add bubbles is pretty clear in this shot. I like everything about the picture except the, well, the lack of bubbles, I guess. So, bubbles. Well, I've got several pictures. I ended up getting the short straw because this was really messy to do, but this machine blows out plenty of bubbles, and we photograph them on the black background. Now, to get the black background, it was simply a matter of turning the, the key light, the main light, away from the background towards the camera. Basically, no light hits the background and it goes black, just like the pictures at the beginning of this video. Now, the black background comes in handy in a second, but first we need to actually select the bubbles. And we're just going to get the freehand selection tool and I'll draw around some of the bubbles and around back to the beginning. And then we'll go to edit and copy, close that down and choose edit and paste. Now that will put the bubbles on a brand new layer and I can put them anywhere I want, but you'll look at that and you'll notice that they don't really blend in at all. Well, here comes the magic. All we need to do to blend the bubbles in is change the layer blending mode, which is currently set to normal, and I'm gonna change it to screen. And one of the magic properties of screen blending mode is it takes anything that's pure black and makes it, well, transparent. And those bubbles actually look like they were really, really there. And it's absolutely fantastic. Okay, so that's one set of bubbles, but we've got more pictures of bubbles, so let's add some more in, why not? Let's get another freehand selection tool, and we'll draw around some of these bubbles here, maybe. And we'll copy those. And we'll edit and paste them in. And we'll put them into position, use the move tool, and they can come up the top here somewhere. And we'll blend them in with a bit of screen. And then we can go and get some more. We've got another one here, and this, one, this one's got loads of bubbles. So again, we'll use the, the free hand lasso. Maybe we'll get some more bubbles like that. And right around to the beginning. Yeah, there we go, that's great. And we'll go to edit and copy. Go back to this picture, edit and paste. Lots of bubbles now that can go anywhere we like. So we'll pop them up there, and we'll blend them in with a bit of screen blending mode. So that puts all the bubbles into the picture, but remember these are layers, so you can move them around and you can put the bubbles anywhere you feel is correct. And if there are bubbles that you want to move, for example, maybe these three down here, you can of course just get the freehand selection tool, draw around them, and then get the move tool, and you can drag bubbles anywhere you like. There we go. Select and deselect. So there we are, there's how you can take a picture with very few bubbles and add as many bubbles as you want to create the final image. Well, if you've enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos from myself and the other amazing presenters here on Adorama TV, you know what you've got to do. You've got to click on the subscribe button. Hmm. Okay, well, something like that. I'm Gavin Hoey, thanks for watching. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.